the next slide that um, bring up um, is the recommendation for government agencies to address the impact of structural racism and recognise and address the impact of socioeconomic deprivation on perinatal health, specifically on preterm birth, which after congenital anomaly is the leading cause of perinatal death. Um, and you may look at this and think this is a massive recommendation, and it absolutely is. Um, but because it is big, it takes everyone being aware, um, it takes everyone being engaged, and it takes everyone working towards it. Um, our next speaker hails from Te Rarawa, uh, Ngāti Apakura and Pitcairn Island, with a background in public health and systems change, is Kitty Dargaville. Um, Kitty is a principal policy analyst at Te Pau Hauora Māori at Manatū Hauora and is the lead for Ao Mai Te Rā, an anti-racism anti initiative to support the way the health system understands, reacts and responds to racism in health. Um, and we are incredibly privileged to have um, Kitty Dargaville joining us from the UK at what must be about three o'clock in the morning now. Oh, oh yes, Kitty. yes. <laughs> Nga mahi, your timing is perfect. It is bang on 3 a.m. in the morning. It's a pleasure to be here today, everyone, to um, talk to you about how you might leverage the resources produced as part of phase one of Ao Mai Te Rā and how, you, how this could help progress some of the conversations within health and across sectors about addressing racism, in particular, structural racism. So just a bit of background about Ao Mai Te Rā. It's comprised of two phases that will be implemented over the life course of Whakamoa, the Māori Health Action Plan. So phase one was a discovery phase to, to um, help us understand the problem of racism and, to, and the practical application of anti-racism. Phase two is a design phase focused on implementing a systems change model and the development of new solutions. So we've purposely used this approach because the way that we frame and understand the problem of racism and, and the practical application of anti-racism in phase one will directly impact on the types of solutions that are developed as part of phase two. So phase one commenced in April 2021 and concluded in February of this year. It produced a suite of outputs which are now available online, and this includes Fidia Tumukatangata, the anti-racism systems change model, and Manatu Hawada's position statement and working definitions for racism and anti-racism in the Aotearoa health system. So this recommendation, the recommendation that's being proposed is, a, is, is the gold standard. However, we have a system, a health system, a broader government environment and a nation that are at different parts of their anti-racism, satiriti or waitangi and equity journey. And a big part of implementing a recommendation like this is about taking people on the journey with you and looking at ways to progressively step people through the different manifestations of racism to help them see how racism operates as a system. So this recommendation will require a long-term commitment to change and a breakdown of actions over the short, medium and long-term, which I'm sure you guys all know. The short-term should focus on the critical foundations that need to be laid for this COPAPA to be sustainable and successful. So how might you build collective responsibility and ownership for addressing racism in this space? How might you build a shared understanding and a shared language for what racism is and what effective anti-racism action looks like in this space? There is a need to give people a sense of what's actually possible, as well as the practical steps that can be taken. So as we know, race and ethnicity are, are, not, are not a factor for illness or death, but racism and discrimination are. And without proper context, the social determinants lose their meaning and can end up presenting as disparities that are the result of some sort of natural phenomena. The ability to, to name and take action against racism is premised on having a common understanding of the consequences of racism in health and a shared language for what racism is and what effective action looks like. The work we've done as part of phase one of Ao Mai Te Rā gave us some working definitions for racism that helps us to show how racism manifests and what it looks like in terms of the conditions that maintain and perpetuate racial health inequity. So interpersonal racism, we know this occurs between individuals and happens when individuals interact with others and their personal racial prejudice affects how they act or behave, whether that's overtly 
covertly implicit, explicit, so forth, towards racialized others or people who are different to themselves. Institutional racism occurs within an institution or a system, and it looks at how policies, practices, and laws that intentionally or not exclude and foster the unequal distribution of power, privilege, resource, and opportunity. And then we've got structural racism, which occurs among institutions or systems, plural. It looks at the cumulative impact of multiple institutions that foster racial inequity through mutually reinforcing policies, practices, and laws. That is through the likes of housing, employment, education, health, and so forth. But the cumulative impact of these determines differential access to goods, services, and opportunities based on race or, health, race or ethnicity and directly impacts on well-being and health. So when racism operates as a system, we can see that there are racial health inequities that are due to the conditions that are set upstream, which lead to the marginalization of certain groups and the unequal distribution of power and resources. And this leads to differential access to opportunities, treatment and the quality of care. The conditions that are set upstream have a direct impact on the way that people respond through differential exposure to risk and protective factors, which we know leads to differential health outcomes between and within population groups. So to summarise, um, oh, the controls are gone again. But to summarise, this recommendation requires a hearts and minds approach that pulls people into a new way of thinking, while also creating opportunities through policies, new policies and practices that push people into a new way of doing things. A deeper understanding of the determinants and the forces that underlie the uneven distribution is needed. And so a common understanding in a shared language provides the basis for not only desensitizing the fear associated with having conversations around racism, but the start of a productive conversation about how we can work collectively together. And it's from that shared space of understanding that we can start finding solutions in places where it matters most, rather than simply at the clinical level. If you'd like to know more uh, about phase one of Aumai Te Ra and the definitions work, but more so Fria Tumaka Tangata, the anti-racism systems change model, it's all available on Manatu Hauera's publications website. Namahi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, thank you, Kitty. Um, thank you so much um, for this presentation, for this work, and for everything that you do in this space. Um, we think you're amazing. And for um, anyone who hasn't already looked at the Aumai, Aumai Te Ra, um, including the podcast series, um, I highly recommend you check it out. It's, it's, definitely, um, it's definitely a really important uh, bit of work.